Glad you're at church today. God's three deadlines. Everybody say God's three deadlines. Everybody say God's three, God's three deadlines. Yeah, go ahead and turn your neighbor and say God has a deadline. Tell somebody they wouldn't listen. Tell somebody God has a deadline. Yeah, and I know, listen to me, I, I got to preface everything I do because people here, man, and watching online, they, they'll, they'll dig in, they'll add words and this, that, and the other. I know that we serve a God of grace. He's a good, good father. He is crazy about me and he's crazy about you. But don't you dare for one moment because you're a Southern Baptist church think that you can do what you want to do, live the way you want to live, act the way you want to act, and you're going to get away with it. Y'all watch me. We serve a holy God. We serve a just God. He will not allow anything to escape his attention. And everybody under my voice and watching by Facebook, I got to do this. We all, watch, will stand before God one day. We all will stand before God one day. And every word that proceeds out of your mouth, you will give an account for. The way you treat people. The way you talk when nobody else is listening. The, I'm telling y'all, listen to me. God has a dead line. Has a deadline. So what are God's three deadlines? Let me give it to you really quick. Because I'm only going to get to one today. Y'all know me. Yep, I wanted all three in one session, but it's just not going to work. So what are God's three deadlines? Listen to me. Number one. The number one deadline. The number one deadline that God has a deadline is bless me against the Holy Spirit. Bless me against the Holy Ghost, King James says. It is called the unpardonable sin. That is one sin that is unforgivable. Wow. You said, Brian, I thought God could forgive all of them. I got you. No. There is a sin out there. One sin that I have found in the Bible that is, that is unforgivable. When you bless me against the Holy Ghost, and we're going to talk about this. I got to teach y'all. We're going to preach and we're going to teach. The second deadline is sending away your day of grace. Everybody's got grace on your life, but watch this. If you keep sinning and keep sinning and keep sinning, Romans chapter 1 says God will turn you over to a reprobate mind. And you keep sinning and you keep sinning. You're going to do what you want to do. Act the way you want to act. I pro you know what you're doing? You are sinning away your day of grace. I'm going to prove it to you. This is good. I like good Sunday Bible studies, preaching, teaching, anointing, Holy Ghost. Yeah, I like it. Number three, deadline number three is a sin unto death. It's called the sin unto death. So the, the, listen to me. A sinner, a lost person, a person that does not know Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you, commit, you can commit deadline one and two. But it is impossible for a child of God, a true Christian, a true Christian to bless him against the Holy Ghost. A true man of God. Because what blasphemy is, is that you are rejecting the Holy Ghost. You are rejecting God. How can you be saved and reject? Y'all see what I'm saying? You, you can't do that. That's a, that's a divided house. A house that is divided can't stand. So listen, the only one that a Christian, me and you, hopefully all of us, can commit is really deadline number three. But I'm going to preface this. I'm going to go back to deadline number one. And I'm going to preach this. Does everybody understand? Everybody understand? Say, yes, sir. Amen. Deadline number one, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, the unpardonable sin. Watch what the Bible says. says Listen, Rafferty can get up here and I can give you a good doctrinal paper. I can give you a good doctrinal explanation. But what does God say? That's what matters. That's what matters. Matthew chapter 12. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30 through 32. Bobby, it's so funny. The other day we was at your house and you quoted this verse. You quoted these verses. And I said, Lord, he ought to know what I'm preaching. You quoted this. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30 through 32. Watch what it says. New Living Translation. 
anyone who isn't with me opposes me. Anyone who isn't with God, you oppose God. And anyone who isn't working with me, oh, this is so good. Who Anyone who isn't actually working with God, watch what you're doing. <laughs> you're actually working against me. So, I tell you, every sin and blasphemy can be forgiven, except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which will never, ever, ever be forgiven. I'm going somewhere. Anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven. Watch this. The Son of Man. That's not talking about God. Watch. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, will never be forgiven. Neither in this world or in the world to come. Did y'all hear me? Church, listen, this is some serious, serious stuff right here. So what is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? And watch this. This is crazy. I'm going I'm to teach y'all. If you truly blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, how long do you have to live? There's a deadline. There's a deadline. There's only one sin, according to the Bible, that God will not forgive, and that is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And listen to me very carefully, because I got brought up, old school, that if you use God's name in vain, that's blasphemy. That is not blasphemy. Listen to me. Now, it's wrong. <laughs> it's sin. You shouldn't do it. You shouldn't use God's name loosely, but it's not blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. If you don't repent of your sins, that's not blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is not you being unfaithful, lying, sinning against God. No, what is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost? What is it? Because we say it all the time. I heard people say it and don't even know what it is. What is when someone truly blasphemies against the Holy Ghost? What is it? Now listen, here it is. I'm going to give you the two Greek definitions. Can I teach y'all just for a moment? I'll get to some preaching in just a moment. But if you can't teach, you can't hear teaching, you'll never, you may shout on the preaching, but you got to get the teaching. Listen, there are two Greek definitions for blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. I didn't write this. This is the Greek. Blasphemy is this. Is this listen to this. Crazy. Discrediting the work of the Holy Spirit for the work of the devil. Woo, I'm talking to somebody now. You start discrediting the work of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about somebody can speak in tongues and you're sitting there going, ah, that ain't real. You better be careful. When you, when you start discrediting the work of the Holy Ghost, what you're doing, let me go deep with you because this is not a Kentucky sermon. What you're doing is that you are blaspheming against God, the Holy Ghost. Because what you're doing, you say, that is not the work of God. That is the work of the devil. Be careful. Be careful. When you start, watch, when you start discrediting the work of the Holy Ghost, you are blaspheming against that God. You're back. Hallelujah. I almost did it right there. Number two, rejecting the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Discrediting and rejecting. Discrediting and rejecting. Discrediting and rejecting. I got to say it because they say you got to say it seven times before people get it. When you discredit the work of the Holy Spirit... Or you reject the work of the Holy Spirit. That is blasphemy. It's going to shock y'all. Because some of y'all thought <laughs> using God's name in, in vain was blasphemy. It's not. I need y'all to lean in and listen to this preacher very carefully. Listen to me. You've got to be careful. When the Holy Ghost shows up at church. When the Holy Ghost shows up at work. When the Holy Ghost shows up at home. You've got to be careful. Listen to me. You've got to be careful. That wherever it's at, do not discredit the work of the Holy Ghost. Don't sit there. Listen, here's discrediting the work of the Holy Ghost. I believe, watch. We say we believe in all the Bible. Do you really? Do you really? Come on. I'm asking y'all today because this, I'm going to hold y'all up here. Because when you go like this, that means, watch this, it's not for vote no more. That means everything from in the beginning to the last day man is God sealed and God revealed. I'm preaching really good today. God sealed it and God's revealing it. Be very careful when somebody is under the influence of the Holy Ghost 
and you're back there discrediting what the Holy Ghost is doing in that person's life. Be very careful. Warning. Be very careful. You're not God. Ooh. Be very careful. I ain't even got to it yet, and it's already. Yeah, I'm going to preach myself happy today. Be very, very careful. Don't, don't be very careful. You sit there and go, oh, that ain't real. Be very careful and say, they're a fake. Be very careful. I'm preaching. It's quiet in here now. Be very careful when the Holy Ghost is working. Holy Ghost, not man. Holy Ghost. I know there's fakes out there. I know there's cons out there. I know the devil's out there. But I also know that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is real. I know that tongues is real. Prophecy is real. Everything is real in the Bible. And be very careful you don't discredit what God, hallelujah, is putting together. Hear it all the time. Be, listen, I can't get away from this. Be very careful when God is working that you discredit him. Be very, listen to me, I'm trying to help somebody because there's a deadline. There's a deadline. There's a deadline. And I can prove in the Bible, if you truly, truly, truly commit blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, you'll be dead in 24 hours. I'm going to talk to you in just a minute. <clears throat> the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 and John chapter 6 that God will at least work with man one time. So you can't sit and say that God's not here. That God don't love me. There's no evidence of the statement that you're making. And watch this. God don't care if you're an atheist, agnostic. He don't care. He don't, he'll take you just as your bad self is. And he'll come into your heart. He, he's the only heart surgeon that can open you up without opening you up. He's the one that can do an inward work inside of a hard shell heart and make it return like soft. God is the only one that can take a drug addict, I'm paying, and turn them around instantly. I'm talking about without therapy. I'm going looking at me. I'm telling, I'm talking, God can heal you, deliver you, and set you free. He's the only one that can do that. Don't discredit, hallelujah, what God is doing. Don't discredit him. I've seen it this morning. A mom and daddy got it right and their kids just followed in line. I'm getting baptized too. If, daddy, if daddy's getting baptized, I'm getting baptized. If daddy gets it right, I'm getting it right. Y'all, hey, hey, hallelujah. I'm telling you the truth today. Don't discredit. You say, Brian, I don't believe it. It's, it's not real. You just discredit the Holy Ghost. I told y'all it's going to get tight. Be very careful when the Holy Ghost shows up and starts working and your flesh disagrees with it your flesh will disagree but i'm talking to a bunch of spirit field that you recognize well ain't it sad mark that we as christians who say that we're saved don't recognize when the holy ghost shows up dr tozer he said isn't it sad the holy ghost could walk out of a church and they wouldn't even know he's missing I'm so glad. I'm going to make this public. I am so thankful for a church that believes in all the Bible. I am so thankful for a church that allows God to walk. Because God will give you a free will. God will never force himself upon you. That's like me making Dana marry me. I want a wife that loves me. Yeah. If you put a ring on it. Yeah. So, here, Listen. Genesis 6, John chapter 6 says God will at least work with man one time. Everybody say one time. So there'll be a time in your life you'll feel a pull. Mm. You'll feel a tug. You'll feel some Holy Ghost conviction. There'll be something in you. Maybe here today, you may be that one person that's sitting here today that feels a tug in your life. You may be sitting under my teaching, you're this worship, the media, the baptisms, and today's your day, sir. Today, you may feel that tug. But listen, here's what blasphemy is. is when God has worked with you and worked with you and worked with you and worked with you and you reject him and you reject him and you reject him and you reject him. Watch. There's going to be a deadline. 
And this deadline is God's going to say, you know what? I have worked with you. I have worked with you. Your heart is hard. You're not listening to me. You're doing your own thing. You're not turning from your sin. You're not repenting of your sins. So I'm going to work with you. Watch. I'm going to work with you one more time. One more time. And if you do not repent, and if you do not turn from your evil ways, if you don't surrender your heart over to me for the last time I work with you, that is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Do y'all understand? Sir, you, ma'am, you may, teenager, you may be here today, and God, this may be the last time that God's going to pull. God's been talking to you about everything. God, y'all, are y'all getting this word? Listen to me. Hallelujah. Adultery is not the unpardonable sin. Now, preachers preach it like it is, but adultery is not the unpardonable sin. Murder is not the unpardonable sin. I'm going to say something that's going to mess y'all up because I hear this all the time. Suicide is not the unpardonable sin. It is not. You can't find it in the Bible. Now listen, I, don't do it. <laughs> it's wrong motives. You're not thinking right. But I'm telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name and you can't prove it's wrong in the Bible. There's only one sin. Everybody say one sin. There's only one sin that God says, I will not forgive. And when you turn against my Holy Ghost, and when you reject Him, and you turn to your ways, I'm taking my hand off your life, and 24 hours you'll be a dead person. Let me go on. I got here. Let me show you something in the Bible. Are y'all good? Give me, give me a few more minutes. <laughs> That's why I did one point. Y'all should be saying, thank you, preacher. <laughs> Let me show you something you probably have never seen in the Bible before, but I feel like I need to preach on this. And what I'm getting ready to show you is a proven fact. If you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, if you discredit God, if you reject God, 24 hours you'll be dead. Let me prove it to you in the Bible. Y'all ready? Let me show you something. If someone truly commits blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, they'll be dead within 24 hours, according to the Bible. Let me show you one case in Numbers chapter 16. This is, this is, this right here, man, it just messed me up. Here we go. Numbers chapter 16, write this down, take note, go home, read it, do a Bible study, let God speak to you. 29 and 30, verse 29 and 30, Numbers chapter 16. All right, y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Turn your neighbor and say, God has a deadline. Here's one case in the Bible out of many, out of many. There were 250 men. <laughs> Moses was the leader. Moses was the pastor. Moses was the elder. Moses was the leader. Moses was the one that was over the people of Israel at that time. There were 250 men that were, were mocking him. They were discrediting what God has done in his life. Listen to me. Be very careful when a real true man or woman of God steps up, even to the pulpit, even in your life. Be very careful that you don't discredit. Because I'm getting ready to read something too. He's going to miss a lot of you. You've probably never read this in the Bible. But this is a true story, by the way. Hey, they turned against Moses. They discredit the activity of the Holy Spirit working in Moses' life. They discredit it. And then they rejected God. They discredit Moses. And they rejected God. They discredit the man of God. And then all of a sudden they rejected God. Watch, Numbers chapter 16, let me prove this to you. Verse 29 and 30. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you, B-Ref. If these men die natural like all men, or if they visit by a common fate, fate of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. What he's saying is this. You discredit and you reject, there's going to be an uncommon thing happen. Here's the uncommon thing. Watch this. But if the Lord creates a new thing, this was the Old Testament. God said, I'm going to do something new. I'm going to do a new thing in your life. Listen to me. If, you are, if you're the same today as you was a year ago, shame on you. God says, I want to do a new thing 
in your life. And somebody needs to receive that today. God don't want the old you. God don't want the yesterday you. God wants a new you. God wants a new beginning in your life. God wants to do a new thing in you. But here's the problem, Mark. The children of Israel said, oh, no. <laughs> You're not going to do anything new here. A lot of churches are like that. We're good. We've done it like this for 250 years. Now, now I like salvation. I like baptism. But Holy Ghost, you ain't going to do anything new here. Cricket, cricket. Cricket, cricket. Watch what he says. Ooh, I'm getting, I feel a cold. <laughs> it says these words, in the earth, well, I'm going to create a new thing, comma, and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them. Their house, their cattle, livestock, everything. And they go down alive into the pit. I'm preaching. They go down alive. Brian, that was an earthquake. No, God said he opened up the earth. It didn't shake. It opened. Y'all got me? Look, I'm going somewhere. I promise. Then, watch this is so good, Jimmy. Then you will understand that those men have rejected the Lord. Deadline. There's, there's a deadline. 250 men. Y'all listen to me. 250 men. I don't know how many is here today. Probably more than, more than 250. Watch this. 200. What if, just say there was 250 people in here. They came against Moses. They discredited the man of God. And they started openly rejecting God in front of everybody. God opened up the earth. Y'all hear this, Pastor. He opened up the ground. He opened up the earth. And he swallowed alive 250 men. Now, if you do your Bible study and do it correctly, and you go back and do a historical study on this, you know what else happened? Everybody say, what else happened, preacher? This is crazy. This is crazy. Because, see, we read the Bible, but I want the Bible to read you today. Opened up the earth, 250 men alive, went down into a pit, went down into the ground. Because they re rejected God and they discredited the man of God. Here's what else happened. Listen to this. What if I told you, not only did 250 men die. So good. Y'all check this out. It's a good Bible study. But 14,500 spectators died. We leave this out. He said, 250 men, they, they said, I discredit what Moses is doing. We're not going to do a new thing. We should be back over in Egypt eating filet mignon. Instead, you got us out in the stinking wilderness and we're having to depend upon quail. I'm not doing a new thing. I'm here. This is the way I am. I'm not doing it no more. This is the way God made me. We're not doing a new thing. And they discredited the man of God and they rejected God. And when they did that, the earth opened up. Y'all got me. Say, I got you, preacher. They, it opened up and 250 men went down in the earth alive. 14,500 spectators was on the sideline. Just watching, observing. Oh, I'm going to do this. I ain't real. I ain't real. I ain't real. I don't believe in God. I ain't doing a new thing. It's the way it's been. It's the way it's always going to be. 14,000, check me out. 14,500 spectators who were just watching died. Died. Everybody say God's got a deadline. Everybody say God's got a deadline. Some people ask me all the time. They say, Brian, why do you give so many invitations? Because I believe today there's somebody here today. You may have discredit. You may have rejected. You may be so far from God. Your heart is beating really fast right now. But you're so far from God. You don't feel him like you once felt him. You may be at church. But you don't act like the church. It's sort of like the little girl last, last week. <laughs> at kids camp. Listen. If y'all want to check your heart. Work with kids. I found out really quick, Holly and Donna, please don't put me in the nursery. Everybody else, aren't they cute? And I'm over casting out Beelzebub. 
<laughs> no chill. It's all right, man. It's all right. I was one of those kids. That's why nobody wanted to keep the nursery when I was young. But here, here's the thing. Listen to me. Listen to me. Somebody's here today. This little girl said these words. It's so funny. She was all at one end. She raised her hand. She said, so, Brother Brian, why do I need Jesus? And so there was another little girl all the way down at the other. And she raised her hand. She said, I know. I know. I said, all right. Well, why, why does she need Jesus? So she won't go to hell. And I'm sitting there going, that's really good. That's so good. Why do I need Jesus? So you won't go to hell. Why do I need Jesus? So you won't go to hell. Why do we need Jesus? Because he is the answer for all things. He started it. He's going to finish it. He's everything in between. Why do you need a closer relationship with God? We all need Jesus. And watch. God's evidently not through with you because you're here. I'm going to ask the praise team to come. I'm going to shut this down. I want the praise team to come on up. I'm going to, I'm going to close with a true story. And when I read this story, <laughs> it challenged me. Because I think a lot of times, I know we say we love God, but do we really need God? Do, did you wake up this morning saying, God, if you don't touch me, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. And we do say so loosely and lightly. There's, I'm going to close this story from Dr. J. Harold Smith. J. Harold Smith. He, Dr. Smith, he tells a story of him doing a revival in South Carolina. Everybody say South Carolina. And there was a young man sitting in the back of the church. And this young man was making fun of the preacher. He was mocking him. He was making fun of the other people who were shouting. I don't know about y'all, but man, my, my granny was a shouter. But this young man was sitting in the back of the church and he was making fun of the preacher, making fun of the people who shout and saying amen. And so after the service, Dr. Smith said he was impressed by the Holy Spirit to go talk to this young man. Don't y'all listen to me. Dr. Smith told, asked the young man, he said, man, I'm so, so glad you're here tonight. So glad you came to church tonight. But I need to ask you a question. Dr. Smith looked at this young man. He said, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you saved? Are you, are you on your way to heaven? Do you know the Lord? The young man turned back to Dr. Smith and I quote, I quote what this young man said. I don't know Jesus. I don't want to know Jesus. I don't want to be saved. And then the young man looked at Dr. Smith. And here's, here's what he said, Jimmy. This is going to make some of you just go, oh, God. But this is what the young man said. Why don't you and the Holy Spirit both go to hell? So early that morning, it was 112. 112, it's a true story. South Carolina, Revival. Somebody mocking, rejecting, making fun of the man of God and the way people worship and the way things are going on. Here's what happened. One twelve a.m., Dr. Smith received a phone call from the pastor of that church. He said, Dr. Smith, do you remember the young man that told you and the Holy Spirit to go to hell? Dr. Smith said, oh, yeah. I remember him. The preacher said, well, the young man was in a fatal accident tonight. Drunk, drinking, driving. He crashed his car and it killed him. He had a deadline. I want y'all to lean in. See, we live in South Central. We've got 131 churches. Somebody gets mad at somebody, they just go to another church. They just start another church. The devil's trying to divide the churches. And watch this, he's not just using COVID. He's using Christians. That young man was at a revival in less than 24 hours, he was dead. 250 men discrediting, rejecting Moses and God. Earth opens up, swallows them alive, kills them. 
14,500 people on the sidelines, spectators making fun, rejecting, dishonoring, mocking. All 14,500 got swallowed up. So here's what I'm saying. I close. If you truly, today may be, listen, I'm trying to scare you. I'm just trying to keep you out of hell. Don't go to hell. You may be under my teaching today and God has been working with you, working with you, working with you, working with you, working with you. And he's trying to convict you, not condemn you, but convict you. He's trying to call you back home. He's trying to work in your life. And you're like, nope, 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 nope. Listen to me very carefully. There's a deadline. And if it's the last time God is working with you, y'all better listen and listen to this pastor. I will stand before God on this one. All of them. If you reject him for the last time, he's working with you. You blast him against the Holy Ghost. It's the truth. I can prove it all through the Bible. All through the Bible. You can thread all through the Bible. If you truly commit blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, 24 hours, you're a dead man. D-O-A. Promise. You said, Brian, I thought God was holy. He is. I thought God was love. He is. He loves you so much, He sent His one and only begotten Son named Jesus Christ to a cross. An old, nasty, rugged cross. He took a nail here. He took a nail there. He took one down here. And He did it for you. 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 Don't you dare discredit. Don't you dare reject. So while the Holy Ghost is working, we'll back off. Let him be God. I've done what he called me to do. I stuck with my assignment. If y'all are ready, because I don't know where y'all are at, but everybody in here, listen to me, if you really believe the Bible, if you really believe the Bible, how many of you know we're living in the last days? Come on, I want you to raise your hand. If you really believe, I'm going to beg y'all. Get your heart right with God. Get your heart right with God. Because watch, when you get your heart right with God, you'll get it right with man. You get your heart right with God, everything else will line up. Why do I need Jesus? The bottom line, I may be the only crazy pastor who will say hell in church, so you won't die and go to hell. Y'all hear me? Hell is as real as heaven. So if you're breathing and you're here today, congratulations. You know what that tells me? Here's what it tells me. Your deadline's not up. Your deadline's not up. Your deadline's not up. You may be young under my teaching. You may be 90 under my teaching. Your deadline is not up. That means while you are breathing, please, in Jesus Christ's name, make it right. Why do we wait till we're sick to try to make it right? Why do we wait till we file file bankruptcy or we ain't got a penny in our pocket? It was a God, if you give me my money, if you give me my wife, if you do this, God, I'll serve you. Watch this. I love Dana Michelle Rafferty, but with her or without her, I sue Jesus. I'm going to worship him till the day y'all bury me or I go up. I wish I had somebody who knew what I'm talking about today. We ain't got time to play patty cake. We ain't got time to fuss and to argue. Do not discredit and do not reject what God is doing in y'all's life. Elkhorn, y'all watch if I stand. Do y'all realize what God is doing here at this church? How many baptisms we have today? Five. One last week. Ninth in the state of Kentucky in baptisms. And if you're out there today sitting there going, Oh God, I don't know if it's real. Watch out! Watch out, sir! You're messing, you're messing with some soul. 
And if God done in the old time, He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I feel the Holy Ghost. You may not be getting swallowed up by the ground, but you may be getting swallowed up by bills. You may be getting swallowed up with decisions you got to make. You feel like the earth is opening up and is swallowing you. You can't breathe right now. Here's what I'm saying. Y'all ready? God, I just seen this in my spirit. And y'all don't have to believe me if you don't want to. God says, you tell them just to reach up. You may be in a hole right now. You may be in a dip in your life right now. The ground may have swallowed you. But while you're still breathing, reach up. Reach up. And God will take your hand. <laughs> He'll pull you up. I feel the Holy Ghost. He'll pull you out of the miry clay. He'll stand you up on the rock. And God will change that. I need somebody to give God a big praise in this house if you believe me. Come on. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. God, we praise you. So I don't know where y'all are at. I know where I'm at. Please don't discredit or reject. You start discrediting what God is doing. Oh, here's what God just spoke to me. When you discredit what the Holy Spirit is doing, you've just called God Satan. Try that on. Try that on. Try that on. Try that on. Because if the Holy Spirit's working, it's God. He's working through people. It's His Spirit is in the house. God is alive. People are being saved. Baptist Christians are staying full. Things are happening in Elkhorn. We're, you see what I'm saying? But if you sit there and go, ah, that ain't real. That ain't real. Man, they're fake. I know why I'm, they're fake. You discredit what God was doing. And you might, see how big of a boy you are. Let's see how big of a girl you are. Why don't you go ahead and call God Satan to see how to get away with it? So, I'm done. This altar's open. I love y'all. Please let, let this sermon go from here to here. Get it down in your heart. Do not discredit and do not reject what God is doing. When you reject what God is doing, you call him Satan. And when you reject what he's doing, watch. It's just a matter of time, 24 hours. The ground's going, oh, this is good. God just, when you die, they bury you, right? Some of you are going to die a premature death. If you don't get things right with God. Yep. The Bible says a man can add or take away from the years that God has given him. I see it all the time. So Father God, in Jesus Christ's name. I preach what you told me. And God, I'm believing today, Lord, somebody's here today. The Lord, they're far from you. Maybe they have discredited you. Maybe they have rejected you. But God, right now, in Jesus Christ's name, Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Have your way. Go from the front to the back, side to side, top to bottom. Start with me. God, I pray, Lord, if I've done anything to discredit or reject what you have done, Lord, I, I say that is sin. Lord, forgive me. And Lord, help these precious people. May we become a 21st century church that believes the Word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, I mean, this altar is open. Let's come.